for unparalleled blend <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom and if you're new here, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And today we'll be doing a long form review of the beauty, <laughs> the beauty blender bounce, <laughs> the beauty blender bounce uh, liquid whip long wear foundation. Now we really need to cut back on the names of these uh, beauty items because I feel like we're getting very long winded. So I did say it's long form. So if there are only certain aspects that you are interested in, I'm going to have them in chapters down below and also time stamped in the description. So essentially what I do is I talk about, was I excited to get this foundation when I initially got it? And then I talk about ingredients for a little bit. Then I talk about what the product claims. And then I do a five day wear test, which is inserted in here. And I have each day linked out um, separately in there and then I do my final thoughts so wherever you want to wherever your heart wants to take you let it take you there but I'm here for the long haul because I am making this video and that's how these things work okay hi hello okay so the beauty blender foundation came into my life via Sephora if you didn't know this already I worked at Sephora for about four years and I received this in gratis now whenever they did come up to me and say that hey we're gonna get this in gratis what shade do you need Etc. I would say I wasn't very excited about it, but I do believe that this was one of the first foundations I received in gratis. So it was like kind of like a, I was excited, but like this foundation, you know, like it was like a twofold scenario there. Like I was excited that I was getting a foundation. I was not really excited about this foundation. So whenever I first got it, I had no expectations. It's been a while since I worn this. This particular review was requested by this user on my last video. So as this came into my life, um, I wasn't very excited. And it had been a long time since I used it before this review. And uh, I remember liking it whenever I first used it. Uh, liking it a lot, actually, and talking about it quite a bit. But then I like stopped using it. Uh, I, I do have a shade issue here and you'll see that whenever I do the try on time, but I'm not really concerned about the shade. I am more concerned about wearing the formula and reporting back to that to you. So uh, let's get into some of the facts. The Beauty Blender Foundation is one like fluid ounce, costs $40, is vegan, gluten, and cruelty free, and it comes in 40 shades. I will say that this foundation in particular is often on sale, so keep that in mind as I go through the review. If this seems to pique your interest, uh, just know that uh, you might you don't really have to pay full price for this. Or at least not, they're setting the precedent that you don't. I don't know if this is something that they're getting rid of in their range or not. All I know is that what I see with my eyes is that it's oft on sale, especially at Sephora for $20 for half off. And on their website, they often run sales too. Pro tip, uh, if you are interested in a specific product, I would recommend going to that brand's website and signing up for their mailing list. Brands often do more sales and a higher percentage of sales than Sephora does twice a year. So if that's something, um, I, I could, I'm speaking to like higher end brands, not really something in, in the drugstore. Drugstore is often also on sale, but I'm not savvy in that. And you would have to seek out another creator. All right, let's talk about ingredients. But before we get started in my last foundation review, which I will link for you up here, I always get the side wrong. Every time I do this, I get the side. Is it that side? Is it that side? It's that side. It's that side. Uh, last time I did one of these foundation reviews, it was pointed out to me through a couple people that uh, EWG Skin Deep is a, not a reliable source for talking about ingredients. So I will not be using that going forward. But I do just want to be upfront when I'm talking about ingredients. I'm not here to judge you in any way. And I'm not here to set off like caution tape that you shouldn't buy this product because it has these ingredients. I think it's just good to know what you are putting on your skin. I also live under the the opinion that if it was put in a cosmetic product, it is probably not at the level that it's going to be toxic to me, even if it has potential to be toxic, which seems to be like where a lot of the fear mongering happens. So I used a variety of different websites to go through this. And I was never, I just am pointing this out. I'm never looking at uh, product reviews from these websites. I am 
going ingredient and by ingredient and like looking up what that ingredient does, why it might be in my cosmetic product. And if it's interesting or like good, I like to talk about that as well as if it could be an irritant. Those are just kind of the things that I'm looking for. And I would assume if there was ever an ingredient in a product that was like really terrible for you, uh, I would not be the first person to catch it. I would not be the creator who did that. So I'm just pointing that out here. So I'm not here to fear monger. I'm not here to scare you away from a specific product if I talk about a specific ingredient but there's also a lot of ingredients that can cause irritation even in their safest of forms just because people are sensitive to them so that is kind of my goal when I'm talking about ingredients and I also like to talk about good ingredients just because we don't often hear about those either so I'm not here to call out any brands in specific not here to call out any websites in specific and I'm not here to scare you away from any products or tell you that a product is bad specifically because there's a certain ingredient in it okay now that we have set this disclaimer, let's move along. So one thing to note about this foundation, of the foundations that I have talked about so far on my channel, this one had like the least amount of ingredients, which was kind of impressive. I am not someone who's like concerned about clean beauty because I think clean beauty does kind of often fear and like lean into some fear mongering to like discourage you from trying uh, things and just like I you know sometimes I think that clean beauty takes it just a little too far this one had like a far fewer ingredients than some other foundations that we tried which I found impressive I think the if you can create a quality product with less ingredients that's like nice like that feels good I, I'm not saying that like just because there are more it makes it something bad or just because there are less it makes it better. There's a lot of silicones in this foundation, so if you're not into a silicone foundation, you might not appreciate this. Again, this one also contains talc. It does have more of a matte finish. So just be buyer beware, okay? When, whenever, because some people don't like talc in their products, so just letting you know. This foundation does claim to be matte, but it does have two ingredients that are gonna be good for dry skin. It has both glycerin and sodium hyaluronate. Those are both humectants, and essentially what humectants do is they kind of keep your skin moisturized throughout the day. It grabs moisture, like kind of out of the air. It's very interesting, and then like uh, you get the moisture from that. It's, I think that those are two ingredients I would like to see in foundations and other things more as I go through them. I think everyone we've had has had glycerin in them or side of sodium hyaluronate. Even if I didn't call them out, they would have been in most of them. But I, I do appreciate those being in here. Okay, now let's talk about the claims from the Beauty Blender website. And as I'm telling you about these, I will be essentially putting a very shitty commercial together uh, for the Beauty Blender foundation. So here we go. The best foundation is the one you can't see at all. This weightless, buildable, full coverage foundation gives you a natural matte finish that wears for up to 24 hours. Bare skin feel, yet completely full coverage. Its silky smooth formula was developed with an exclusive, high speed, hyper whip process that whisks it into light as air texture for unparalleled blendability. Never chalky or lifeless, its finish has a multi dimensional effect, like naturally gorgeous, healthy skin. Available in 40 shades that address tone and skin texture so your complexion looks smooth and even. Infused with hyaluronic acid and antioxidant rich white birch extract, your complexion is both perfected and protected. Perfect for normal dry combination and oily skin type. All right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Actually, it may not be, but this is always my favorite part of the videos. Also, these take a lot of work, so I appreciate whenever I see the final product. It's time for my five-day wear test. So if you've never seen one of my videos before and you need a little bit of a preface, what I do is on days one through three, I try different application methods. So on day one, I use my hands and I apply it with my hands. Applying with my hands is typically not my favorite, but I do it just in case you are someone who does like to apply your foundation with your hands. So you can see how it looks being applied that way if you are interested in the foundation. Day two, I do use a beauty sponge. Typically I am using a beauty blender, but one, not spawn. Two, I just prefer it. I know it's like too expensive for a sponge and there are other good sponges out there. I just have yet to find the sponge to replace the sponge. I don't know. Okay, I'm just like telling you that. Like I'm, I'm not really brand loyal, but I'm kind of brand loyal. Not to beauty blender the foundation, but just like beauty blenders, the sponge. And on day three, I will apply with a brush. On days four and five, I will keep applying it the way that I liked the best. So if I like the brush, the sponge, or with my hands, I will just keep doing that application method for the last two days. If I find any problems with the foundation as I'm going through my wear test, I will try and switch things up as I go, just so I can see like, does this powder work? Does it not work? Just anything to try to get the product to be successful for me. 
I will I will adjust. But also if it does work well the way I apply it the first time, it probably won't adjust too much. But I do make a concerted effort to put cream products on top of it, as well as powder products and using different tools and such, just to see if any kind of lifting happens or disturbs the foundation whenever I put those things on. All right, let's get to the wear test. So this is the beauty blender. I like went really, I was like really doing the most with this look. So this is still with the hand application. I'm obviously in like lighting. I just took like a bunch of photos <laughs> um, to commemorate this look because like this is the look. But so today was the hand application day. I'm not gonna be wearing this for very long, uh, probably like two hours max. So we're not gonna get like a good wear time today. But I did want to show you in the studio lighting. Um, it's about 7 p.m. so I don't have much daylight um, time left. I actually really like the way it looks and the way it applied with my hands which I was really surprised by because this I, I remember this being like a higher coverage foundation and I remember I haven't used this foundation in a really long time so um, I remember liking it and I remember thinking the shade was really wrong and like the shade's like not perfect because I, it's like Definitely, I think I got matched to it in the summertime, so um, that's the best match, but it does look really good. Like, I think it, like, brings some life to my skin that I don't really have naturally. Um, and also, like, and typically when I do a look, like, this dense, I want to have, like, the most makeup on. I don't think it was necessary. Like, I did it with the hands. It looks so good. No concealer on. It, like, set really well. I'm actually pretty excited. I'm finally thinking, like, I have yet to do one of these foundation reviews where I ended up on the other side thinking I would very much like to keep this foundation. Um, I don't know that this foundation is super popular, but I've always had good experiences with it. So um, I'm excited to see what the next few days have in store with me. And watch me, like, not like the beauty blender method the best. Um, yeah, but no problems here. The Bobbi Brown was a great choice, I think, because this is like a demi-matte foundation. Um, and my skin was feeling a little bit dry today, which is unusual for me because I'm pretty oily. So it's just like, it all kind of worked out. But I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to show you some like natural lighting, even though it's like not gonna be like the brightest of light. And then I will show you overhead lighting. And then um, I will report back to you at the end of today, but I don't suspect a lot to be happening. Ignore my mask and my Peloton and uh, and this is what this looks like in overhead lighting, and it still looks really good. I looked, I used the Laura Mercier setting powder, which I've been using the kimchi for my last couple. I don't know if that's making the difference. And I use the Chantecaille blurring powder, and I think it does something. I think it does something. So I won't use the Chantecaille tomorrow. No, 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 even though I want to. But I'm, I'm very pleased with this so far. Okay, so I lied. It's like 8 p.m. I thought it was 7. It's a poopsie. Um, so this is what the, this is the natural lighting I have left. I'm gonna assume that it would look good in the natural lighting if it looked really good in the overhead lighting. So I apologize. I will make sure I try to put the foundation on a little bit earlier in the day because that means like I'm only gonna be wearing this for an hour, and most of that hour is going to be me editing 
pics for Instagram. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk to you while I'm setting this with some Laura Mercier setting powder. So again, went with the Bobbi Brown uh, face base. I think it worked really well under this foundation yesterday. Um, I know we probably need to have a conversation about this shade, but I did mention, I hope I mentioned somewhere else. If I didn't, this will be my first mention of it in this video. I understand that the shade is not correct. I was matched in the summertime to this shade and a coworker matched me and she's very talented. However, I am unlike many people, um, I like to match myself. If I'm like not sure, I err on the side of going a little bit paler. A little bit paler and I have found that that works really well for me even if I'm working with a client um, I like to err on the side of of course you want a perfect match but like also in like the fast-paced world of retail you're not gonna be able to like try everything right um, I like I, but I'm just saying I like to err on the side of like light and I some people say that makes them look sickly but I always ask if I'm matching someone I'm like do you use bronzer because I will say like if you are on the side of lightness you have bronzer. Do you know what I mean? And oftentimes you're highlighting the center of your face anyway. Literally, the foundation is like mostly for coverage and then you're putting a lot of other stuff on your face, except like the neck is kind of where mostly it matters. Um, anyway, I, and I just, I like to err on the side of lighter. So this is uncommon for me to like have like a shade that's like both deeper and a little bit orange, um, not orange leaning. It does look very stark compared to me, but I don't think this is like looks orange it just looks orange on me I actually like kind of like this color and apparently I was like I really was this color at some point because I used to wear this foundation without having to like blend it all the way into my neck so at some point the shade did match me today it does not <laughs> so I know I see it I don't need to hear about it we are like texting formulation for the most part for this situation for the snares um I think I liked it better with the hand application I'm not done with my face yet, so I'm going to go do that. Um, and then I will report back with natural lighting. And I did it earlier in the day. And we will get like a six-ish hour wear time today for day two. And then, um, so we will see how it wears after a few hours. And then I will show you um, a natural lighting. So. So here we are in natural light. I obviously have like the rest of my face on. Um, it looks really good. I think it looks really good. 
and everything plays really well with it. The blush went on really well. I uh, put cream highlight on top of it and it didn't lift anything underneath it. So it's like really nice. It's really nice. I really like it. And I did not use, the first day I used the Caudalie um, Poreless, what is it called? Blurring powder? God. God, get it together, Tom. But I'm, I love this look. Here we are in overhead lighting again. Artificial. Uh, I think it looks good in this lighting too. Wow. I'm truly living. The color match thing is really a problem, but that's not really the foundation's fault. That's my former coworker's fault. Okay, so we've hit about the five hour mark. So in con so I I'm actually very much enjoying wearing this foundation. I think it wears very well on me. Obviously, like this is on me and my skin type that it's working on. But so I don't know if you guys remember if you didn't watch my Giorgio Armani one. What was happening is like obviously there's like texture here, but like the Giorgio Armani like truly emphasized this and now we're like five hours into the day and it like still looks pretty good. It has like nice cut like it's just I think it still looks just just lovely on the skin and I cannot complain about it. I will say I think I liked putting it on I think I like the way it looked with my hands just a little bit better. I don't know why I felt like well never mind I didn't use the blurring I was like I felt like I looked way more blurring but then I didn't use the same blurring powder today. But I'm very happy with the way this looks on uh like the way it's laying on my skin the way it it's like doing minimal damage to like my pores aren't like cuckoo, kachu, crazy. It looks, I think it still just looks delightful. But I need to wash this off and go to bed because it's 9.30 and I have to be up at 5.30 and I try to be asleep for eight hours even though I really never am. So, but that's on me.
All right, it's day three. And so today we did the brush application, which you can just watch me do. It's a gloomy, gloomy day here in Pittsburgh. So I will not have like natural light available to me to show you that. But <clears throat> it applied really well with the brush. What I think is funny is I think the Beauty Blender was my least favorite way to apply it. Although like I liked all three applications, but I think the brush like looks really nice. But I would say I think my hands were my favorite way to apply, which is like Surprise, shock. Didn't think that would ever happen in one of these videos, but um, looks really good. I mean, this is like obviously a fresh app and it still doesn't match me, but like we know this, we know this already. Oh, like this, I'm oh, sorry. This, I use a palette I haven't used in a while and like, look at it. Look at my eyes, look at them, they pop. This bitchy lip, ooh, everything about this, diva. I've been doing it. But I'm going to show you this in overhead lighting. Not getting a lot of wear time today either. I realized that the first day I did it with my hands, like I only had worn it for like an hour and I took it off and I didn't even do like a check-in. But yesterday I did a check-in. So, you know, and then tomorrow I will be doing it for all day. I'll have it on all day. So we will have like a very good idea of how it's gonna look. This lip, oh my God, I'm living. I need to do this more often. Okay, overhead lighting with the brush. Look at my laundry that I haven't, Put away in like a week and i like never mind i was about to tell you a bunch of stuff but like it looks really good in this lighting too the lip looks less impressive in this lighting but still i'm kind of here for this it seems like we're having a success all around sorry my lights like started dimming on their own they're making choices that i'm not making for them Artificial intelligence is real and it's taking over. It's starting with my lights. My lights. How vain is that? To be like, I'm going to be the one that artificial intelligence takes over first because I am somehow important. But I'm, I know I'm not. Oh, Ooh. like it shouldn't look this good in this lighting. Oh. Okay, here's like one final check-in for today. Um, It's only been like two hours since I put this on, so like not much has happened, but... I just wanted you to look at my face one more time because I like really felt this. Oh, wow, so stunning. Oh, can you believe how stunning I am? I'm really just feeling it today, so let me have this moment. It doesn't happen often. It definitely has not happened on one of these videos <laughs> because I feel like these have only gone awry for me, these foundation videos. And today is a, a, we're, it seems like we're in a, we're having good momentum with this foundation. I am just kind of bummed that I don't have it in my shade, and I wonder if they're discontinuing this foundation only because it's like always on sale. But um, I know it's on sale this weekend. I don't need another foundation, but I think I want to hold on to this one because it is like kind of good for photos, you know, insta looks. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so we're on day four of this beauty blender journey that we are on together. And so I think I am going to use the brush for today. I really like the brush and my hands, but I like don't love using my hands, you know, just out of like messiness sake. Where is my foundation brush that I used yesterday? Literally used it yesterday. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. So if you want to use a brush with this foundation, I recommend the Sephora Diffuser 64. It looks like this. So it's um, less dense on the top here and then it gets dense down here. Find that it's really good for medium to full coverage foundations. It's like my preference, whatever. That's the kind of deal that I want. I have been like the whole, me the whole method I started out using has been working really well. I've been using the Laura Mercier setting powder to set it at the end. And then I've been using the Caudalie blurring powder. Now this might be a little bit of like cheating, but I'm I'm trying to figure out if I like, like this or not because it is limited edition and I might snag another one if, if I like decide because I think that it is helping. Um, but just know that this is like a step that I am doing that may be enhancing it, but I did not do it on day two and I talked about that but I've been liking it. But I think I like it most for on-camera use, not so much for like in-person use. Anyway, that's just like a short little review of like where I'm at. I've been loving the Pat McGrath blush. I've been using it the whole time I've been doing um, this review and I think it's stunning. Especially, uh, I bought some more shades um, 
but this shade is like very nice. I don't have anything like this blush in my collection at the at this moment. So this is like both unique and I really like the formula. I think it like works really well. Um, should I do like a drugstore challenge where I like buy stuff from the drugstore and try it out and then I like compare it to things that I have? Is that interesting? Let me know. Um, okay, I know this video is long already, so we are gonna get to zooming. I'm gonna turn on a fan now that I'm done talking and we will report back once I have uh, the, the foundation on. Just me in leather, that's a little better. So the way I just did my complexion is the way I've been really enjoying doing my complexion, specifically with this foundation. So um, what's great is like we learn a couple things from that because um, it doesn't lift at all whenever you put powder on top of it. It plays really well with that. Even if you like tug a little bit because with the blush I just kind of like do like a tap and drag and then I like kind of buff it in. And then also I put a cream. This is from my Project Pan. This is the Pat McGrath like um, cream highlight it plays really well on top of it and just my skin looks really good like I don't know how else to describe it but I just think this really this foundation is really playing well with me and my foundation and I use the Burberry bronzer and I think it looks really good like honestly like pretty excited about the way things are turning out with this particular one I am going to do the rest of my face and then I will show you this in natural light because I have some today and then I will show you an overhead light and then we're gonna do the long wear test today it is currently 1 12 p.m. I'm hoping to get eight hours of wear not doing anything strenuous today though um or like you know going anywhere um although that seems to be like less and less of an excuse as time passes but yeah I'm gonna do the rest of my face show you where it's at and I'm hoping to wear this to like nine ish Okay, here we are in natural light. The eyes are done. We had some falling out, but my skin looks good. Let's take a look in artificial. Looks good. This is like the big, the big surprise is like really how it looks in this overhead light. I think it looks too good in the overhead light, but yeah. I'm hoping to get like eight to nine hours of wear, seeing where we're at, looking gorge, looking stunning. Tomorrow I will not use the, my last day, if it is tomorrow, then it will be tomorrow, but I won't use the blurring powder again, just to double check to see if that makes a difference. Oh wow, it's so gorgeous. All right, we've been wearing for eight hours and I still think it looks good. Like obviously, sorry, I was like laughing at something and I like teared up, teared a little fun cry but everything looks good for the being like an eight hour wear i cannot complain i think it looks good everything looks good though this whole complexion looks good stunning i oh today i mean not that anyone cares because like this will be like old news at the time but my other two pamagrath labs blushes came today and i'm very thrilled with it Ooh, ooh, ooh.
Um, I tried a different one of the Pat McGrath blushes. This one is Paradise Venus, and I really much like it. I got the pink Cleona shadow, like, everywhere. That was my bad, though. I, like, put way too much of it on, and it just kind of like, happened. But it's fine. It's fine. We're not talking about that, but it does look pretty. I look pretty. Mm. So, today, we might get a longer wear test. It is 10.30 in the morning, and um, I have a whole day ahead of me. It's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. It won't be when you see this, because I don't have that kind of time. Um... But yeah, I'm going to show you natural light, and then I'm going to show you overhead light, and then we will go through the day, and I will report back at the end. See, we still like it. Oh, also note that I did not use the Chantecaille blurring powder today. I made a point to not do that because I had it on the last couple days. So, just don't want it to affect how I feel about this. That's not the off button for the camera. This is... Okay, here we are at natural light. And then here we are, here we are, in the overhead. I'm doing, I'm washing my sheets. Um, do I only have one set of sheets? Yes, that is a fact. Um, but I do wash them every week, so. Should I buy more? Probably. Will I? Very unlikely. But, it does look good, it still looks good. I don't know, guys. I don't know, Yins. I think we got a winner, but literally look at how much pink glitter I have all over my face. Okay, side note, side note, Ugh, side note. Um, I don't really care for Charlotte Tilbury, and she's like not a brand I'm interested in supporting. However, this lip gloss is uh, something, and uh, I might buy a full size of it once I'm done with my mini, because it, and not, I would like to compliment myself here. I have very plump, luscious lips, so my lips do handle the product rather well. But there's something about this, uh, the formula and everything, that just like, oh, it's like juicy and oh, it looks so good. Also, I don't think I like recording at this angle. I just learned. Um, so I won't be doing that in the future. But yeah. Okay. See you in a few hours. Okay, so I've had the makeup on for about 10 hours. It's 8.30 now. So, just like looking at the foundation, I look a lot shinier than I think I have in any of the other days, but that's like 10 hours of wear. So of course my oil is gonna break through. Um, I don't think it looks bad though. Like by the end of the day with the Giorgio Armani, like I was like getting re like really gross. Um, I'm thinking I'm looking more oily because I didn't use the Chantecaille powder. Not that the Chantecaille powder is, like, aimed at, like, being um, a oil control. It's just, like, more powder. But, like, here, here let's, let's, let's see something. Let's just throw on some powder. Yeah, all I need was just, like, a little bit of powder. I'm not someone who like really touches up like that or like powders you know, throughout the day. But I mean, now it looks really great again. Not that I don't mind the shine, but like, I think, well, I think we found our first winner friends for me. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna hit you up with my final thoughts on this foundation right now. I mean, I'm sure you could tell based on my wear test that I really enjoyed wearing this foundation for the five days that I tested it. I I do have some qualms, though, and some heads up just in case um, you were interested in this product that I just want to give to you. Uh, I had a lot of success with this foundation, but I know that this foundation is, like, not for everyone. Not that any foundation is going to be, but I'm going to specifically tell you why I think this isn't going to be good for certain skin types, okay? Okay. But before we talk about anything, I hate this packaging. So they built this. This is a little indentation. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. And the way that the um, spout, I guess we can call it, uh, when you pump it, it's supposed to go in there and then you're supposed to put your sponge in there. 
And for me, as someone, as you watched, I actually didn't the, prefer the beauty sponge method for this foundation, which is the irony is not lost on me. But as you can see here, it's pretty dirty. And often uh, my uh, these get a little bit dirty for me, but there's really no good way to like clean this up. So uh, aesthetically, it's like a cool bottle until that happens. And then it's like not so great. But what I do love is there is a lock on the pump on the back. So if you do travel, you can travel safely knowing that your pump is like not, like your foundation is not going to get everywhere. I would still put it in a separate bag just for you to know. So I do highly recommend this foundation if you have oily or like combination skin because it does wear really beautiful. It's a demi matte finish. I wouldn't say it's like full matte if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking just like all matte look, I don't think this is actually going to be the best one for you. But if you like something that definitely starts the day pretty matte and then like kind of will soften throughout the day. I think this is like a very good go-to and it wears really beautiful. However, if you have oily skin and a ton of blemishes and a lot of texture on your face, I don't know that this is going to be the one for you. Whenever I did work at Sephora, our beauty blender, ble oh, wow, beauty blender is like really a tongue twister now that I have said it like a thousand times. The beauty blender brand rep. <laughs> We often talked about this because uh, I got close with her because I was like, this is like one that I like the foundation a lot. And so we talked about it. And she's like, she described to me that it's not for everyone and like heavily people with heavy texture on their skin are like really not going to like this. So it's a little bit unfortunate because I think it is a beautiful product otherwise, but I don't feel confident recommending it to someone who has a lot of texture on your skin, dry or oily. Now, like I said, I think someone with dry, non-textured skin might have some sex <laughs> they might have some success with this, especially if you're using a more emollient base. I really did like this with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin C or Vitamin Face Base. I, I thought it worked beautifully over that. I do also have oily skin, so that's something to keep in mind whenever you're watching my review. So I do think like if you were interested in this or you like the way it looked on my skin and you wonder if it's going to look good, I would say if you do have some drier leaning skin, like if you're Sahara Desert dry, I don't think you should try this. But if you like lean dry, like a little dry, I think that you can make this work for you with a very emollient moisturizer or moist like a primer like a very emollient primer i think you would have success with this i think you would i think you might be able to make this work for you i'm actually so excited <laughs> that we did one of these reviews and it came out the other side that i enjoyed it i will be keeping this foundation i i'm like it's like way too late for me to like try to get another shade so i'm hoping i get maybe a little bit tan this summer so i can start using it uh i it's it just, it really did me well. It did me well, and I am proud of it. I do think that like the, it was like definitely medium full for coverage, and I liked that, and especially it inspired me to do some like intense looks, which I hadn't done in a while, and that was really lovely to like play with that. So here are all of the foundations I have done reviews on so far, ranked. I'm sure you're not surprised by that ranking. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you are interested in seeing more foundation reviews, please check my description box below. Down there, I have all the foundations that I currently own and are available to be reviewed by me. I'm not looking to buy any foundations to review at this time. I just want to go through my collection. And I'm trying to just get rid of the foundations that I know don't work for me, but also make content with them before I do, <laughs> before I do that. So that's kind of where we're at in this grand schema of things. Yes, like... Subscribe to me if you enjoyed my content. I'm trying to upload more. I'm trying to be like more consistent with that. I'm trying to like be the one. I'm trying to like do the most. So uh, I would appreciate if you did subscribe to me. And I do have other content that I work on. I am a content creator in like the most, I don't know, like I do a lot of content. I have two podcast, three podcasts. Two of them are like mine and one I like I'm a co-host on and that's just more like of a workload definition who has to do the most work and it's not me on the one and that's why I like don't claim it as my own podcast but I appear there. All of those are in the description box as well if you want to follow me on other places. I am Hope Mess Tom on Instagram as well. Again, I appreciate you and I thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye!